Good morning, everybody. It's so good to see everybody this morning. Everybody's smiling this morning. It's because of the weather change, right? It's so cool outside. Boy, what a blessing that is. It is so good to see everybody this morning. Thank you for choosing Living Word. We are so glad you're here. If you're watching online, leave a comment, a prayer request. We just thank you. It's going to be a fun day. My sister-in-law is back playing the piano for us this week, so I'm excited about that. It's a lot of fun. Julie's brother is here. So. Brother-in-law, sister-in-law. But it is so good. I'm so thankful that they're here. Everybody's excited. Brian's going to preach this morning. The pastor's on vacation. They're kind of from last week, remember, filling their cup up this week. Yeah. So next week it's going to be exciting to hear what he comes back with. It'll be a, a probably a powerful message. So if you could, we're going to stand and lead us. Uh, will you lead us in the word of prayer, Brian? And then we'll get going. Thank you. All right, let's give thanks to the Lord. Heavenly Father, Lord, we're so grateful for this day. We thank you for your loving kindness and your mercy and grace that you bless us with each and every day. That we can come and worship, mm -hmm. give praise unto you, study your word, and sing hymns. Lord, we pray that they would be pleasing in your ear, that you would give us grace, Lord. Lord, your spirit be upon us, all things that we do may be for your glory. And this we ask in Christ Jesus' holy and precious name. Amen. Amen. It's going to be a good day. At Calvary, what a beautiful song. I can't wait to sing this. Years I spent in vanity and pride, caring not my Lord was crucified, knowing not it was for me he died at Calvary. And mercy there was great and grace was free, pardon there was multiplied to me. There my burdened soul found liberty at Calvary. My sin I learned, then I trembled at the law I spurned, till my guilty soul imploring turned to Calvary. Had mercy there was great and grace was free, pardon there was multiplied to me, there my burdened soul found liberty at Calvary. Now I've given to Jesus everything. Now I gladly own him as my king. Now my raptured soul can only sing of Calvary. And mercy there was great and grace was free. Pardon there was multiplied to me. And there my burdened soul found liberty at Calvary. Glory. Oh, the love that through salvation's plan. Oh, the grace that brought it down to man. Oh, the mighty gulf that God did span at Calvary. And mercy there was great and grace was free. Pardon there was multiplied to me. Burdened soul found liberty at Calvary. Amen. Amen. Y'all sound so good this morning. I love being right here. I can hear all the sides. I love it. I love it. This next song, when the roll is called up yonder, I'll be there. Amen. Who agrees with that? Amen. Here we go. When the trumpet of the Lord shall sound and time shall be no more, when the morning breaks eternal bright and fair, when the saved on earth shall gather over on the other shore, and the roll is called up yonder, I'll be there. When the roll is called up yonder, I'll be there. When the roll is called up yonder, I'll be there. When the roll is called up yonder. Called up yonder, I'll be there. On that bright and cloudless morning, when the dead in Christ shall rise, and the glory of his resurrection share. When his chosen ones shall gather to their home beyond the sky, and 
the roll is called up yonder, I'll be there. When the roll is called up yonder, I'll be there. When the roll is called up yonder, I'll be there. When the roll is called up yonder. When the roll is called up yonder, I'll be there. Let us labor for the master from the dawns of setting sun. Let us talk about his wonders, love, and care. When, when all of life is over and our work on earth is done, and the roll is called up yonder, I'll be there. When the roll is called up yonder, I'll be there. When the roll is called up yonder, I'll be there. When the roll is called up yonder. When the roll is called up yonder I'll be there. Amen. Amen. That is so good. How about Paul playing the accordion? Can you guys hear him playing the accordion? What a boost. Well, we can hear it really good up here. It sounds so good. Thank you, Paul. Thank you so much. Blessed assurance, Jesus is mine. What a wonderful hymn. Let's really sing this out this morning. Blessed assurance, Jesus is mine. Oh, what a foretaste of glory divine. Heir of salvation, purchase of God. Born of his spirit, a washed in his blood. This is my story, this is my song. Praising my Savior all the day long. This is my story, and this is my song, praising my Savior all the day long. Perfect submission, perfect delight, visions of rapture now burst in my sight. Angels descending, ring from above. Echoes of mercy, whispers of love. This is my story, and this is my song. Praising my Savior all the day long. This is my story, this is my song. Praising my Savior all the day long. Perfect submission. All is at rest. I and my Savior am happy and blessed. Watching and waiting, looking above. Filled with His goodness, lost in His love. This is my story, this is my song. Praising my Savior all the day long. This is my story, this is my song, praising my Savior all the day long. Amen, amen. Y'all sound so good this morning. It's beautiful. Shout to the Lord. My Jesus, my Savior, Lord, there is none like you. All of my days, I want to praise the wonders of your mighty love. I comfort, my shelter, tower of refuge and strength. Let every breath all that I am, never cease to worship you. Shout to the Lord, all the earth, let us sing. Power and majesty, praise to the King. Mountains bow down and the seas will roar at the sound of your name. I sing for joy at the work of your hands forever i'll love you forever i'll stand and nothing can 
heirs to the promise I have in you. My Jesus, my Savior, Lord, there is none like you. All of my days I want to praise the wonders of your mighty love. My comfort, my shelter, tower of refuge and strength, let every breath, all that I am, never cease to worship you. Shout to the Lord, all the earth, let us sing, power and majesty, praise to the King. Mountains bow down and the seas will roar at the sound of your name. And I sing for joy at the work of your hands. Forever I'll love you, forever I'll stand. Nothing compares to the promise I have in you. We can give the Lord a hand this morning. Y'all sound so good. What a great day. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Let's do this song. I love this song. Light of the world, you step down into darkness. Open my eyes, let me see. Beauty that made this heart adore you, hope of a life spent with you. So here I am to worship, here I am to bow down, here I am to say that you're my God, you're all together lovely, all together worthy, all together wonderful to me. King of all days, oh so highly exalted, glorious in heaven above. Humbly you came to the earth you created, all for love's sake became glory. So here I am to worship, here I am to bow down, here I am to say that you're my God, and you're all together lovely, all together worthy, all together wonderful to me. I'll never know how much it costs to see my sin upon that cross. I'll never know how much it costs to see my sin upon that cross. So here I am to worship, here I am to bow down, here I am to say that you're my God, you're all together lovely, all together worthy, all together wonderful to be. So here I am to worship, here I am to bow down, here I am to say that you're my God. You're all together lovely, all together worthy, all together wonderful to me. So here I am to worship, here I am to bow down, here I am to say that you're my God. You're all together lovely, all together worthy, all together wonderful to me. Amen, amen. Let's give the Lord a hand this morning. Thank you all. You all sound so good this morning. You look pretty. The weather's great. And Brian's going to be doing a little preaching this morning. Y'all can be seated. Good job. Thank 
you much, Tim. We doing all right? Okay. Morning, everybody. So hopefully, Pastor Stephen, we pray that him and his family are uh, being filled, decompressing, and just enjoying uh, time off for a while. Um, before we get started, let's uh, open with a word of prayer, and then we'll jump right into our text and our message. Heavenly Father, thank you so much for today. Lord, we thank you for your holy word. Lord, we, we ask that your word would go forth in power and in strength, in the, in the means and ways that you had planned for it from eternity. Lord, use me as your vessel to speak your word. Lord, I pray that your uh, hand and your spirit would be upon this congregation, Lord, that we may know your will towards us. We thank you for your great love, and it's in Christ Jesus' name we pray, amen. So a couple weeks ago, Pastor, oh, sorry, Children's Church. Uh, if you have any uh, young ones up to the age of first grade, uh, we have Children's Church available for you. Uh, Suzanne and Jean will be taking the kids. Thank you, ladies. We appreciate it. And we're always looking for children's church helpers. So if uh, if you feel led, please, uh, by all means, you can get in, the, get in the lineup. It's better be in the game than on the sidelines, right? <laughs> Not to say there, I mean, there's bumps and bruises in the game, but, right? <laughs> um, a couple weeks ago, Pastor Stephen, he, we had talked about him going on vacation. So I, I said, by all means, yeah, I'll get up and... Uh, uh, give a give a lesson. Um, I decided to do a lesson on, um, I guess, working for the Lord. You know, we have so many priorities in our life that, and um, we serve a risen Savior, um, but at the same time, we get so distracted with the cares of this world, uh, whether it be our jobs, um, paying the bills. Today's society seems uh, to be a lot more busy, uh, less, I don't know if they shorten the days or, you know, time, is, but we're all under the same constraints. There never seems to be enough time, right? But um, we're going to look at some texts today that have to do with that. So when I finally decided on the text, and have any, has anybody here ever prayed for patience? And, and you kind of know how that works out, right? Uh, trials and tribulations are how we learn things, right? We've talked about in Wednesday night Bible study, um, how do we get wisdom? First, we ask for God to give us wisdom. He says in the book of James that if we ask for wisdom, he'll give abundantly, James 1.5. The thing is, is we gather wisdom from experiential knowledge. Not just knowledge, but we have to experience it first, right? So trials and tribulation gives the experience that with the knowledge and godly um, guidance and the Holy Spirit, we come to wisdom. So, like I said, if you're not in the game, you're not going to learn. So, that's where we are in life. Um, the text for today, if I remember my, you got my notes? We got it. Uh, we're going to start off in Matthew 8. If you open your Bibles. Matthew 8, verses 18 through 22. And I'll read, I'll read the text, and then we'll go through and talk about them a little bit. Matthew 8, 18 through 22. Now when Jesus saw a crowd around him, he gave orders to the depart to the other side of the sea. Then a scribe came and said to him, Teacher, I will follow you wherever you go. Jesus said to him, The foxes have holes and the birds of the air have nests, but the Son of Man has nowhere to lay his head. Another of the disciples said to him, Lord, permit me to go and bury my father. But Jesus said to him, follow me and allow the dead to bury their dead. The focus of today is going to be on letting the dead bury the dead. But we'll go through and talk about this text, and then we'll, we'll do some other comparisons. So in the, uh, verse 18, this, this text is uh, shortly after the Sermon on the Mount. So the people that would have been with them is probably numbered in the ten, over 10,000. So we have 5,000 people that were fed, 
and that's just including the man of service age. So you have women and children, a huge, huge group of people, right? And so Jesus, at this point, he's wanting to cross to the other sea, side of the Sea of Galilee. The first person that comes up to him is a scribe. Now, a scribe, as we know it from the Old Testament, not so much the Old Testament, but coming into the New Testament, would have been someone that was very involved with the church. Someone, uh, they're part of the Sanhedrin, that is the ruling governing body of the church. And whereas we, we our, our government is basically all civil, right? We don't, our government is not supposed to be involved in spiritual affairs. With, with, the, uh, with the Jewish people and the Israelites, their governing body or their governing text was the Torah, the first five books of the Old Testament. So the job of the, the scribes and to a lesser degree some of the Pharisees and Sadducees was to apply the scripture to their lives, not just moral things, but civil as well. So we see the that there's actually police attached with the Sanhedrin and there's this whole... Um, Kind of like our government, we have this big body of people that are well paid to do jobs that we expect them to do, right? So is the Sanhedrin, and scribes were part of this. They're mostly lawyers, people that were supposed to be wise in the scripture. 631 laws, give or take a couple in the Old Testament, so it was their job to make sure the people were obeying these, right? Or applying them into their lives. As things change, we have things changing over time, and the scribes would be able to do this. But basically, what it was is the, the scribes had a pretty cushy job. They were well paid, they were well taken care of, as with all the uh, rest of the Sanhedrin. So part of what we see in the New Testament when Jesus comes is them trying to protect their occupations. If, uh, if I'm in the church being well paid, and regard, so they had, it's, Clickish, to, I guess to say. So we see in verse um, 19 and 20 when the scribe comes to him and tells him, I'll follow you wherever you go. And Christ tells him, I don't have anywhere to sleep. I basically have what I'm wearing. He, he knows what's in the scribe's mind. The scribe's like, man, if I, I just saw these miracles. Jesus did the, I mean, Sermon on the Mount. This was top notch. If I can hook my wagon to this guy, I'm going to be, I'm going to be set. So Jesus shoots him down. He goes, I don't have a place to sleep. You know, the birds of the birds of the air have nests. So, you know, I'm not your guy. He's telling them, if you're going to follow me, there's going to be a cost. Then we come down to verse 21 and 22, one of his disciples. Now, if you go to the uh, parallel passage in Luke, Right after this event happens with the uh, let the dead bury their dead, we see Jesus sending out 70 disciples, two by two, to go out and preach the word and do miracles. So we have a large group of disciples following at this point, not, not, not necessarily the 12 apostles that we think about, but just disciples. And when we say the word disciple, it's basically just student. So any of us can be considered a disciple if we're if we're a a child of Christ, and we're studying the word, we fall into that category somewhere. So it just depends on how, um, if, we're, if we're willing to pay a cost for it. And there is some cost in life, but it's, it's, a, it's well worth cost, and we'll, we'll talk about that here in a little bit. So another of the disciples said to him, Lord, permit me first go out and bury my father. Jesus said to him, follow me and allow the dead to bury their dead. So at first glance, letting a dead bury the dead, he's really talking about letting the spiritually dead, those, those who, I, who are not a disciple of mine, let people that are spiritually dead take care of the, the uh, affairs of the world. So let the spiritually dead bury the physically dead. Now it sounds kind of harsh at first. Um, I mean, the, supposedly, and the question comes into mind, well, if, he's, if, if his father just died, what's he doing at the Sermon on the Mount and following Jesus around? So did this really take place? In, the, in this time when someone died, burials were almost immediately. I mean, they, didn't ha they don't have the facilities that we have today to take and care for a body, so it was expedient to get him in the grave as quickly as possible. Another possibility for this is, and this is from a missionary in Lyons, France in the 1800s, 
he had a missionary from Syria, and he had invited one of his um, students to come with him to Europe to visit, and the guy told him, no, I must first go bury my father. And the, so the missionary started expressing his grief, you know, sorry for your loss. And the, and the man said, no, it's not, my father's still alive. But I want you, what he wanted was for his parents to become old and the, uh, the affairs of the estate to be settled, and then he would come and follow him. So it may be a figure of speech as in, well, when my mother and father are gone, then I'll come and follow you. So, and there, there is evidence, for uh, decent evidence, but it's, it's, uh, it changes the way you kind of look at this, the verse the first time. Uh, verse 20, we see um, uh, the term son of man. Now, this applies to Jesus in his uh, uh, human form, so to speak, as a man. God came down from heaven, became man, right? Born of a virgin Mary, the only begotten son of the father. The first time, uh, let's turn to Daniel 7 and look at, um, is a good text. Daniel 7, verse 13. And this is in one of the visions of Daniel. In verse 9, he he, uh, talks about the ancient of days, and then he comes down, um, the beast being destroyed. And verse 13 is where we're going to pick up. And this is where the the first reference to the Son of Man in the Bible. So uh, Daniel chapter 7, verse 13 through 14. Verse 13, I kept looking in the night visions, and behold, with the clouds of heaven, one like the Son of Man coming, and he came up to the Ancient of Days, Ancient of Days being God the Father, and was presented before him, and to him was given dominion, glory, and a kingdom that all peoples, nations, and men of every language might serve him. His dominion is an everlasting dominion, which will not pass away, and his kingdom is one which will not be destroyed." If we, uh, we've, in Sunday school, we've been talking about Revelation, and Revelation 1, 7, it says, Behold, he cometh with the clouds, and every eye shall see him. When Christ Jesus does come for his bride, at the end of time, we see him coming in the clouds to gather his people. So if we, if we look in the, in the text that we're just talking about, we see that Jesus is, is letting the people know that there is a cost for following him. It's to say, I want to be a disciple. It, um, it's easy to say you get caught up in the emotion like these, these folks did, look, witnessing the miracles, hearing this great Sermon on the Mount, and you know getting all amped up. But when the rubber meets the road and they're, Jesus telling him there may be something that it's going to cost you in your life. We see them kind of him and hawing. We don't we don't know if they did or did not eventually follow Christ or not. Um, let's turn to Micah six eight. I'm not trying to pick the hardest ones in the Bible to <laughs> to find. Uh, Nine forty two in my Bible, so we'll give you some time. And Jesus, I mean, Jesus is not a, uh, he's not a cruel taskmaster. He, he, they, Jesus is very loving and kind and patient. But he does lay forth um, things that he expects of us if we're going to be obedient to him. Micah 6, 8. And actually, I'll start in verse 6. So Micah 6, 6. Now, uh, Micah was one, another, he was a prophet. He, he was alive about the same time as Isaiah, 750 B.C.-ish, give or take a few years. Micah 6.6. 6. With what shall I come to the Lord and bow myself before God on high? Shall I come to him with burnt offerings, with yearling calves? Does the Lord take delight in a thousands of rams, in ten thousand rivers of oil? Shall I present my firstborn for my rebellious acts, the fruit of my body for the sin of my soul? 
He has told you, O oh man, what is good. This is, this is the focus. He has told you, O oh man, what is good. And what does the Lord require of you? But to, ju- to do justice, to love kindness, and to walk humbly with your God. What does the Lord require of you? To do justice, to love kindness, and to walk humbly with your God. If we, if we've talked in uh, past weeks about walking with God and what does that entail? If, if I'm going to walk with Tim, if, if we're on two different, we have two ideas where we want to go. I mean, Tim may go back to work and I may go down the street to, and get a taco, right? If we're going to walk, <laughs> that's, yeah. But if we're going to walk together, if we're going to be walk with Christ, we have to be in a constant state of communication, right? How do we do? Uh, we have reading of the word. Uh, I know Pastor Stephen when in Sunday school and every I think every class we teach here, we cannot emphasize enough is being a student of the word of God. Um, you have any NASCAR fans? A few? Come on, this is Texas. <laughs> I, 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 I'm from California, basically, so I think about cycling. But you know what drafting is, right? You get, you have a, it's say, and Paul's been riding his bicycle lately. So, and, and where's Flo? We know how windy it's been, right, Flo? <laughs> it's been the windiest spring in Texas ever, I think. So, what's that? Yeah. <laughs> But cycling into the wind, it's, it's a very unpleasant thing. And in professional cycling, they do allow drafting. Now in church or in NASCAR, we have drafting, right? So you tuck in behind someone that's going where you want to go, and it makes your job a lot easier. This is what we try to do in Sunday school or in Bible study or working with anybody. Else. We have plenty of um, people that are well experienced in the church that can help with study or prayer. And one of the beautiful things is once you get involved in one of these groups is the friendships and you have fellowship and it, it's you get your own little um, people that are going through similar things and people and that can uh, lead and guide you and comfort you when things get rough. But also study of the scripture. If if um, if I hook up with someone who really knows and can help and mentor me, it make it makes my walk as a Christian much, much easier. And the beautiful thing about drafting is you not only pulled in behind the guy, but the guy in behind actually creates, relieves some of the pressure on the first guy, the back vacuum. So the, the second person will actually help pu- push the first person. And then so you're working in tandem. You have a, um, it makes life much easier. And you, you actually gather and grow by working with someone, whether it's Sunday school, Bible study, anything else. Uh, Where's Joshua at? A in this hand, B in this hand. Take a pick. B? Thank you. I'm glad you picked B. (laughs) Now, A was going to be me singing, so I'm glad you... Let's take a, uh, I want to turn to Luke chapter 12. Luke chapter 12, verse 16. Luke 12, 16. And he told them a parable, saying, The land of the rich man was very productive. And he began reasoning to himself, saying, What shall I do since I have no, more, no place to store my crops? Then he said, This is what I will do. I will tear down my barns, build larger ones, and there I will store in all my grain and my goods. And I will say to my soul, Soul, you have a good many goods laid up for many years to come. Take your ease, eat, drink, and be merry. But God said to him, you fool, this very night your soul is required of you, and now who will own that that you have prepared? So is the man that stores up treasure for himself and is not rich towards God. 
So we, in the story, we, or the parable, we see a man, and this we can apply it to all of our lives. We know that the amount of focus and energy we, we spend on things not spiritual with God. Uh, and each of us have our own things. Um, me choosing to pick these verses is not just, it, it's a personal conviction for me because I know in my own life I um, have my distractions and I have the things that I want to pull the world in close upon me and if I can just do these things, okay. But that's not what Jesus always wants. We, ne we need to be in fellowship with each other to help each other, um, whatever it may be. It may be driving someone to uh, the grocery store um, it may be witnessing to them or just praying with somebody. But just um, at least in my life, and, th and that's my tendency, is just close in and do the things I want to do. So this is the man. He's a very wealthy, has, has financially in his mind, he's got it all set. He goes, man, I got a good retirement. I got an awesome house that's in good shape. Uh, my yard, my pets, my wife, my kids are doing good in school. I think I need a bigger house. So it's all good. I, I always use the term, it's all fun and games. <laughs> till, you, till, till, the, till the next day. And we see, um, I lose my place again. It's all good. He's going to eat, drink, be merry, enjoy his retirement. He's made no preparations for his spiritual life. Everything he's done up until this time is just, material world he's but and he said he's done a really really good job god calls him he said tonight what does he call him he calls him a fool we spend maybe on earth 90 years if we're blessed compared with eternity it's not even a blink of an eye so we spend so much effort and believe me this is me me <laughs> that that's why i'm up here with this message because i do this we spend so much effort on, on this temporary abode, temporary home. Abraham said he was just a pilgrim. But let us uh, strive, let us strive to, um, to, be, to have that one-on-one -on -one personal, in, in Sunday school we call it the, the personal, personal relationship. Not, not just to know scripture in our heads, but to know it in our hearts. And to have the relationship with Jesus, that you can see bits of his glory here on earth. We're going to see his glory one day face to face. Moses asked, after all this, you know, shaking and quaking of the mountain, what did he do? He, he saw the, the evidence of God, quaking, earthquakes, lightning, a uh, mountain on fire. But what did Moses finally ask? He goes, God, show me your glory. And I think if, if this is something that we seek each and every day and it, it is, a, is a priority in our lives, it, it's rich and fulfilling. And to catch glimpses of Christ Jesus here before heaven, it, it's, I mean, you, you can't, there's no words to describe it. Verse 20, but God said to him, you fool, this very night your soul is required of you. And now who will own what you have prepared? And that's, that to me is very eye-opening because the, the man, he probably thought he was going to live a good while longer. And at that moment when uh, God decides that your days are at an end, there's no more um, coulda, woulda, shoulda. You get one chance. Um, Salvation is for today, right? We are, we are called. If we answer the call, let's not hesitate. Um, sorry. All right. One more, one more scripture, and then we'll, we'll, uh, we'll wrap it up. Isaiah 57, 15. Isaiah 57, 15. And what does Jesus say in Matthew 6? He goes, Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And then what happens after that? All of these things 
Now, I'm not saying, you know, we all, ha we all have careers, jobs, stuff we need to provide for our families, so by no means are we ever to neglect these things. We're, uh, as men, we're instructed by Jesus that we're to be the head, and we're to show agape love, which is for the benefit of the person, not of ourselves. It's sac self-sacrificing love. And that should uh, be extended out to our, our wives, our children, um, anybody. It doesn't matter who the person is. It doesn't matter if you like them or not. But agape love, if we are a Christian, should be extended. And it's, it's not of ourselves. It's through the Holy Spirit, and it's from Christ Jesus our Lord. So let's look at, this is my favorite book or verse in the whole Bible. And I told, I'm, a, I'm out of the uh, NASB today for... Uh, I guess for your sakes, because I usually use King James. Um, but this one I'm going to read in the King James Version. Isaiah 57, 15. And we'll actually go through, the, we'll, we'll go 15 through 21. But verse 15 I'm going to read to you in the King James Version, because I think it's, uh, I don't think you can do better. <laughs> For thus saith the high and lofty one that inhabiteth eternity, whose name is holy. I dwell in the high and holy place with him also that is of a contrite spirit, to revive the spirit of the humble and to revive the heart of the contrite ones. The contrite and the humble, if we're, if when God convicts us of our sin, we can come from no other place than from humility and contriteness, because we, we, yet we realize we stand before a high and holy God who is perfect, infinite, and all-powerful. And when we come to that realization, the conviction of our heart is just to bow and surrender, our, surrender to Christ Jesus. But I like that, the high and, high and lofty one that inhabiteth eternity, whose name is holy. Verse 16, for I will not contend forever, nor will I always be angry, for the spirit would grow faint before me and the breath of those whom, whom I have made. Because of the iniquity of his unjust gain, I was angry and struck him. I hid my face and was angry, and he went on turning away in the way of his heart. I have seen his ways, but I will heal him. I will lead him and restore comfort to him and to his mourners, creating the praise of lips, peace, peace to him who is far, and peace to him that is near, says the Lord. I will heal him. But the wicked are like the tossing sea, for it cannot be quiet. And its waters toss up refuse and mud. There is no peace, says my God, for the wicked. If, if you have not received Christ Jesus as your Savior, today is the day of salvation. God, God is faithful to forgive, cleanses from our sins, and the, it's always, it still amazes me today. We, we go from being enemies of God. In one swoop, we are his children, sons and daughters. And in the Old Testament, the only way to the, to the um, Shekiniah glory of God was the priest who would go into the inner temple once a year. As Christ, when he died on the cross, the veil was torn on the temple, and now, as children of God, we can go before his throne in spirit. We are already seated in the, in the heavenly of heavenlies. And to think that you can in, walk over to wherever you and kneel before his throne, before the high and holy God, is, it's, it's amazing and wonderful. If you have not received Christ Jesus, I ask as we will do an invitation. If I could get uh, Brother Paul, would you come up? And also, Patty, um, we're gonna sing a sh we're gonna sing a hymn. You can stay in place. And we'll pray, and um, if if you feel led, come. <laughs>